So I'm super excited. I got the Wilmington Alto. I don't know what it's gonna play like, but I'm hoping it's gonna be great because I want to be able to recommend a saxophone in this price range. It costs around uh, $1,300. Let's open it up and see how it plays. Okay, so right away, we've got this case. <laughs> this is a good looking case. We've got a saxophone, a neck, a mouthpiece, and some accessories in here. Here we've got a swab. This is a neck and mouthpiece swab, a neck strap. Okay. I just wanna see how well it fits in the case. That does not move, it doesn't move in this direction, it doesn't move in this direction. I'm gonna close up the case. Okay, I do not feel the horn moving inside at all. That's really important. What's nice is it's kind of like one of those lightweight case designs. It's not one of the, the hard cases that are a bit heavier. It's got the backpack straps, so the case is excellent. You know, these guys set up the saxophone in their shop. So I'm expecting all the pads to be sealing really well, that all of the mechanisms will, you know, there won't be any play or, or very little play. The keys are gonna be lubricated correctly, that the corks look neat. So we're gonna be looking for all of that stuff. Visually, there's some some cool things already. The and Look at the engraving. So this instrument is kind of like this brushed finish. It's a matte finish let's say got a serial number here and the serial number is in this art deco font which is kind of funky and you know this engraving here is kind of a throwback to the american made saxophones that had a very art deco style to them so it just says the wilmington it's pretty classy it's pretty well finished looks cool and what I like about it is this you know it's got this really old school vintage vibe to it and it doesn't look like any other saxophone out there that's being made the keys are the standard gold lacquer keys but that makes a nice contrast with the body you've got the sandblasted nickel silver body but some areas like the inside of the bell are left with a satin finish and clear lacquer okay let's examine the mechanisms, okay, pretty good. Very little to no play anywhere. It's a little bit of movement there, and a little bit of movement there. I'd like to see a little bit less and our G sharp key, a little bit of movement there as well. Now, looking at the pads, the pads look really good. These are not the same pads that I typically see on the Chinese saxophones. Let's check the left hand keys. Great. No play there. And I can see that there's oil. This has just been lubricated as well. This is probably more or less how it came out of the factory. They do a, a setup on it, but I don't see any signs that the keys had to be swedged or anything uh, after the fact. So, that kind of indicates to me that it's coming out of the factory in, in pretty good shape. Now, another thing that I notice right away is that the felts are the uh, different color. There's a lot of black felts on here. For example, you've got this key here, this your high E palm key. It's got a cork and then a felt underneath. I guess that is to reduce the, the noise of that key. Looking on the feet of the right hand keys, you've got the same thing. You've got cork on the bottom of the, the, the key feet, but that cork is landing on some black felt. So the black felt is already a nice look. Usually you'll see like green felt on saxophones. I like the look of the black. It makes, it's kind of classy. So we're not at the level of, let's say a Yanagasawa or, or a professional level saxophone, but with a few small exceptions, this is set up very, very well. Now I'm gonna put the leak light down it and I wanna see exactly how well the pads are seen. 
All right, so aside from a few minor leaks, the horn is in good shape. Now I want to check the neck tenon. Okay, that's a good fit, and that's nice to see. And when I tighten that, it doesn't budge. Oh, it fell off. <laughs> when I started playing it, in my first minute of playing it, testing it, this key pearl just popped off <laughs> uh, and I had to glue it back on. That's a minor thing. It's a really easy fix. If you have some super glue, it's a one drop of super glue and that's on there for good. It's not a big deal, but I was a bit disappointed. And if I had bought this horn, you know, for my kid or whatever, and I was excited, I gave it to them and they started playing it and start, things started falling off of it, I would have been extremely disappointed. So as you could hear, this is a great sounding alto. Um, of course, I'm gonna sound like me on just about any horn. There's gonna be subtle differences as, you know, as long as I've got my mouthpiece and reed on there, I'm gonna sound like me on any instrument. But I can tell you this horn definitely has a really good response. The things that I really like about this saxophone, the case it comes with, is fantastic. It's extremely important for well, for anybody, but especially for kids that are going to school, taking the instrument back and forth on the school bus or on public transportation, you need a sturdy case that's going to protect the instrument well. It's very, very important. I love the look of this horn. I think it looks really cool. It has a great vintage vibe. It's kind of uh, seems to me inspired by the design of the old Con and old uh, Bisher saxophones that were made in America, this Art Deco uh, engraving and lettering. I really like it. The pads look good. They got nice big metal resonators in them. I like the key felts and the key corks. Those are made with quality materials. And the springs are nice blue steel springs. It plays very well in tune and I had no problem getting up into the high altissimo range and playing in the low range and there's a nice evenness of tone throughout the whole saxophone. It's regulated very well, okay? I'm gonna be a little bit nitpicky here, but when I put the leak light down it, I found some minor leaks. You can hear it still played very well. I would like to see the pads regulated a little bit better, especially because I have an expectation of the horn coming from Music Medic. Maybe my expectations were too high, but I would have liked to see the horn come out of the box sealing perfectly. But to be fair, for any intermediate horn, that's kind of what you would expect from it out of the box. And another slightly nitpicky thing, but the spring tension is a bit light for my taste. I would like it to be a little bit more, I like those keys to, to snap back. And you know, a couple of the keys like this one in particular, it's kind of lazy. 
That's nothing that can't be fixed in a minute by any repair tech. But again, I would like to get it out of the box in like top working order. So is the Wilmington Alto a good investment? I would classify this definitely more of a intermediate horn and at $1,335, the price is about right. With this saxophone, you get a lot of features you're not gonna get with a student model instrument. You get the really nice case, you get the excellent build quality, you get the, the look and the, you know, you know, the sandblasted mixed with the satin, the nice engraving. If you want a good quality intermediate horn with a unique and vintage look, this is an excellent option, the Wilmington Alto. I put links in the description below where you can purchase this saxophone directly from musicmedic.com or on Amazon, the price is the same. If you do decide to purchase this instrument, I'd appreciate it if you use one of those licks as I will receive a small commission, no extra cost to you. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Let me know your thoughts on what you heard and what you saw in this video. If you liked the video, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. Get yourself subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. Thank you for watching and see you again soon in another Better Sax video.